is a very circular jingle. Good morning and welcome to the Circular Economy Pitch Session. Change Now is the largest event for the planet and brings together change leaders to respond to the greatest challenges of our century today, namely climate change, resources and biodiversity. Today you are part of them. My name is Tatiana and I will guide and moderate this session. And uh, I'm also one of those who believes that uh, circular economy is the mandatory to preserve and improve the natural resources given to us. Uh, today with us is uh, uh, Benoit Escher from Raise Impact, who is an expert in the circular economy. I really warmly welcome Benoit and uh, inviting him to tell us uh, about circular economy. Thank you. And Benoit, uh, floor is yours. Thank you very much, Atiana. Hello to you all. I'm really happy to, to be there with, with you uh, today. So I'm uh, the uh, impact manager responsible for measurement and uh, impact management at Raise Impact. It's an impact investment fund based in France with 200 million euros of asset under management. We invest in, uh, uh, in impact native companies, let's say, but not only. Uh, we are also supporting more classical companies that are willing to undergo sustainable transformation. We focus on four main uh, sectors that raise impact, um, energetic uh, transition, agricultural transition, circular economy, and uh, social inclusion. We are also really uh, uh, willing to spread the methodology about uh, impact measurement and management. Is the reason why we published some uh, videos on the subject that are uh, available on the, on the website. You can uh, check that if you want. And now I will move on to the subject that uh, we are all interested in uh, today, so circular economy. Um, as an impact investor, I will, uh, if I have one recommendation, I will say that uh, measurement is very crucial for you in the way you, you challenge and you assess your value chain as an uh, entrepreneur in the circular economy. And uh, for that, I think there's a few frameworks available for that, but I will may maybe recommend one, uh, the framework from the, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which is called Circulitics, that can actually assess uh, how your, your value chain is, uh, uh, is circular, and it's uh, quite convenient uh, for that. So um, I will recommend you to use that and maybe uh, ask you at the end uh, uh, if any of them already used this uh, framework to, to challenge that because it's very important to enhance your, your, your value chain and to make it more uh, uh, yeah, uh, valuable. So uh, I would say that uh, the, the, the most uh, important challenge is to, to, measure, to measure that and to enhance uh, that. Thank you, Benoit. Yes, indeed, the uh, relation of value chain with the circular economy is one of the utmost importance. So we are very curious to see our pitch presenters on this topic, but before we start, let me invite our jury members to briefly present themselves. Uh, let's continue with you, Benoit, since you are also part of the jury. Please introduce yourself shortly. So I'm responsible for the impact measurement and management I raise impact. And it's uh, how to uh, measure, uh, manage, and enhance the positive impact of uh, all the participation and uh, make sure that uh, you improve that, them over time. And there's no improvement without uh, measurement. So it's why I was insisting on the measurement. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Benoit. So let's move to Davina McPhail from uh, Features Partners. Yes, hi everybody. Uh, I'm, I, I work for Fitrust uh, Partner, an impact investing fund um, investing in, in France, Europe, uh, but also in, in, in Africa and Asia. Uh, we've been uh, investing in social impact um, since 2006, uh, investing in, in small companies, uh, helping them to grow through financial support uh, and, um, uh, and also non-financial support uh, and impact measurement, of course. Thank you, Davina. Uh, Nicolas Fleury from Moet Hennessy. 
Hi, Nicolas, something about you? Hi, hello everyone. I'm delighted to be with you. Um, I'm not an expert like everyone else here seems, seems to be, but you know, we, I'm delighted to be with you. I, I work in a company where sustainability is, is critical. You know, we operate in the luxury segment where time is of essence. And uh, also we are family business, so transmission is important. And we believe that, you know, it's important that we, we, we leave what we've, uh, we've been given, you know, uh, to the next generation. So as a finance professional, I'm delighted to, uh, to be part of that. I think we have a key role to play in making sure that in the way we, we measure what we do and, and we, you know, find the right balance between short-term profit and long-term sustainability. So nice to be with you all. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, so we have uh, Simona. Welcome, Simona, uh, on our uh, session. Uh, Simona Shivasa from uh, uh, May uh, Mayf or M A I F Investment. Uh, uh, please uh, introduce yourself, Simona. Simona. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yes. Good morning, everybody. My, my name is Simona, and I work for uh, a, an investment fund, uh, which is owned by the um, Maif, Maif, which is an insurance company, a French insurance company. So our fund um, is a quite small fund, uh, and uh, I work uh, together with my colleague, which is, um, which is Judith Lor Manumani, which is the responsible of the fund. Um, the fund exists since 2013, and uh, its main objective is to invest in um, like social innovation projects and also some projects with positive impact in the environmental field, but especially regarding circular economy. So um, uh, this is why I'm attending to this meeting today, because it really fits with our investment thesis. Thank you, Simona. It's a really pleasure to have you with us. So now it is uh, Stephen Jachter from Impact uh, Venture Capital, VC. Stephen, welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm from Uruguay. I'm working for, for Impact VC for LATAM. Uh, I am an architect, coach, and, and facilitator of a circular economy. And the, the, the most important thing here is, is to understand that if my business grow, my impact grow. And, and, and when I start, I, I start for, for sustainability, but then I understand that the circular economy is it's almost uh, most important or the next step for, for sustainability. So I am very glad to be here to, to see your projects. I am, I am very glad to, to be with you. Thank you. Thank you for your brief and uh, interesting presentation. Uh, uh, really uh, pleased to have you on board. Now we will start with our pitch presentation. Curious to see uh, innovative solution from our presenters. And uh, let's start with the first pitch, uh, which is uh, Smarter. Uh, it's going to be presented by uh, Andrew Brené Flores. And Smarter is uh, about developing sustainable materials, materials based on biomass and uh, fungi. Hi, Andrew. You can start. I think your slide is uh, ready and uh, okay. you can start with your presentation. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, uh, good morning, good evening, right, or good night, depending on where you are. Uh, I am Andrew Bernes, I am the co-founder and the CEO of Smarter. Um, well, basically, right now, uh, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, up to 40% of the agricultural production is lost. And this has generated different problems for the industry related with the use of plastic in the production, also with the soil degradation and the impact in the uh, ecosystems. That's why we have created Smarter. Smart aims to improve efficiency, productivity and impact, positive impact in the agricultural industry with agri-production solutions made of uh, sustainable materials. The way we do it, 
basically is that we take uh, the organic waste for all of the agricultural industry to make our processes, to build our biopolymers, and then to produce agri, agri production uh, solutions. Um, well, what else? What makes us unique? Uh, basically, as you already know, we are based on a circular economy model where we are using these organic waste, this biomass, to produce the biopolymers. We have managed to reduce two tons of waste or two tons of or biomass for each ton of bioplastic or biopolymer we are producing. But also, we have a high versatility feature in our materials, and that position them as a forerunners in terms of innovations, since they can be used and they can be applied in different industries, such as construction, packaging, and agriculture. Um, the, way that, uh, the way how we are providing value for customers is with our materials and with our final applications. We've got our polyplus, which is a biofilm, a biopolymer, which is fully organic and fully biodegradable. And we are launching and we are uh, negotiating our letter of intent with our microwave, with our micropods. This is a material that has a bio enhancement and it is regenerating the soils while we are allowing the producers to grow better, uh, stronger and uh, more efficient plants. Well, this gives us the opportunity to have over 600 potential customers only here in Costa Rica and a potential worldwide uh, value market over uh, 10 billion of dollars. Um, this is possible thanks to our team. Uh, basically, right now we have experience in materials, industrial processes, biotechnology, also in microorganisms, and we have experience in two different uh, previous startups. Um, we are aware that we cannot build this alone, so this is our network and our partnerships that we have been creating to create this matter in the best way possible. And we know that there are risks, and we have managed these risks with our revenue shortcuts and also with the versatility of our uh, materials to solve the market risks since we are creating something new. This is how our 2021 roadmap looks like. Uh, right now, we are closing our uh, letter of intents, and we expect to be in a scale-up by the end of the year. Um, well. We're asking for an acceleration program. Um, thank you very much. It's time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You are just about the time. Briefly, you are first presenter. And uh, okay, uh, for the next presenter, it's uh, very important to stick to our timetable schedule in order to, to, to deliver session as it's scheduled. So, uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, it is interesting, uh, uh, although maybe visibility of your slides, it's not perfect, maybe um, only on my screen, but I believe the jury has the time to and opportunity to hear you and to see your presentation clearly. Now, let's go on uh, our next pitch. It's uh, Traceless Materials, which will be presented by Johanna. Uh, we are delighted to have you with us, Joanna. Joanna combines entrepreneurial and business development knowledge to scale up uh, early stage ventures and uh, teams. I think the screen is ready for you and uh, you can start uh, as soon as your presentation slides are visible on the screen. So. The floor is yours, Joanna. Can we start? Can you hear us, Joanna? Jane, it's your turn. If you want to start, your slides are on. I am so sorry. I didn't know this was me. Thank you so much. I am Jane Palmer, and I am the founder and CEO of Nature Coatings. Nature Coatings transforms wood waste into high-performing black pigments. Our pigments are direct replacements for petroleum carbon black pigments. Um, petroleum carbon black pigments are made by literally burning fossil fuels 
and the manufacturing process releases millions of tons of CO2 into the atmosphere each year. Additionally, the carbon black pigments contain substances that can cause cancer called PAHs. And these pigments are the most used pigments in the world. They're everywhere. You know, they're on our computers, on our clothes, on our furniture, phone cases, paint, uh, food packaging, you know, they're really everywhere. On the flip side, about 15 years ago, I developed a philosophy that everything I design, I want to be able to bury in my backyard. And our pigment really embodies that philosophy. It's made from just one ingredient, wood, wood waste. So we work with FSC certified forests and we take the bark and the little branches and all the things that can't be used for other industries and we put it into a closed loop manufacturing system that transforms it into the black pigment. What's great about our pigment is that, and manufacturing process, is that it does not create any CO2. The only emission is steam from the water and the wood, and we're able to capture that steam to power the equipment. So it's a very clean process. Additionally, because our pigment is not burned and it's not petroleum-based, it does not contain any carcinogens or cancer-causing substances, which makes it a lot healthier and better for us and for the environment. So our pigment has been developed for scale. It's very easy to integrate into any manufacturing system. It works with ex existing formulas and equipment at printing mills and paint factories. It's literally as easy as grabbing our pigment off the shelf versus a petroleum option and integrating it into your supply chain. So we have come to market with a pilot with a really wonderful French fashion brand. And we came to market with a screen, screen printing ink for textiles. And we have also developed inks for paint, food packaging, um, coatings, industrial coatings, and more. So thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and I'm happy to be here. It's your mic uh, off. Yeah, we can't hear you. Tatiana. Sorry, sorry. I unmuted myself at the moment. Uh, I'm just referring to the slight change in our schedule. Uh, as you see, uh, it, it was uh, Jane Palmer about uh, Nature Coatings presentation. Thank you very much, Jane. It's very interesting and inspiring to see female entrepreneurs uh, with uh, such interesting ideas. Uh, so, obviously, uh, from some technical reasons, uh, traceless materials is not going to be presented in uh, this session. So, we will now move to the next presentation, to the next pitch, which is uh, sooner, and uh, it's going to be presented by uh, Ray Porter. And uh, welcome to Ray, and as soon slides appear on the screen, Ray can start with the presentation. Let's wait for a second. Hi, Ray. Nice to see Hi. you. Yes, nice, nice to see, see you. you. Welcome. Uh, uh, so I think at least on my screen, your presentation is uh, visible. And as you're ready, in one, two seconds, uh, you, you are free to start. Yeah, and how do I advance the slides? Should I just, uh, will you just be advancing the slides as I speak? It's uh, about uh, technical. I think that uh, slides uh, are ready to be presented as you agreed. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for, for having me. Um, I am actually representing, uh, so, um, uh, speaking on behalf of Sooner. Um, I am the, the creator and architect and founder of One Foundation 
which is basically a nonprofit research and deployment ecosystem. And Internet of Mobility is a project that we're working on with uh, key green stakeholders from around the world to develop the next standards and protocols. Sooner is our flagship effort. The inventor is Carl Wagner. Uh, and it's a very interesting approach into the mobility transportation space. Uh, if we can advance the next slide, uh, I can get right into it. Yeah, so by now we can see that uh, it, has, it is more expensive to take oil out of the ground. And we can also see that, fossil, that the renewable energies are getting cheaper than fossil fuels. And we are now, and it's connected to the automobile industry and cars, and new cars were projected to have about 3 billion cars by 2050, and it's simply not sustainable. And they sit around 22 hours of their daily life cycle. On top of that, we measure them by old financial instruments, which the more money you print, the faster uh, our spending power goes down and the, the faster we deplete the environment. So now we have a systemic crisis. Next slide, please. So, you know, the way we're approaching solving this problem is with the same ideas that created these problems. So now there's a lot of institutional investment into the space. There's a lot of policy into the space. But the reality of it is we keep moving the net zero year or time forward. So, for example, in the UK, um, you know, the, the greenhouse gas emissions have not shifted since the 1990s. So it's basically the same. And when the investment's in place, you expect fundamentally different behavior from people like driverless cars or access over ownership and uh, electric fleets. And we are simply not ready for that. So what do we do here? Next slide, please. So we looked at this from a fundamentally different lens. Um, Sooner, as I mentioned, has three patents and uh, very innovative patents of, of converting existing vehicles, existing fossil fuel vehicles into renewable vehicles. In addition to that, we have really interesting connected services whereby communities can create their own versions of uh, Uber, DoorDash, those types of services, logistics, supply chain type of services. And we're doing something very interesting in the space to de-risk investments and de-risk engagement in this space, we are pre, pre-selling uh, NFTs as IDs into the space and basically trading on their value in the metaverse to create demand signals in advance of the application. So we're essentially bridging the gap between uh, investor risk and market adoption by creating something that people already use in the space um, and basically showing, showing that uh, in, a, in, a, in a digital space. If you go to the next slide, we'll show you kind Sorry, of... Ray, but, but uh, I think that we have to stop here, maybe for uh, just the last sentence to, to conclude your presentation, because it is about three times uh, for each pitch. So please, one sentence, and we will close uh, the, this uh, presentation. Thank you for your understanding. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thank you very much for the opportunity. And so we, we are basically creating, uh, we're, we're bridging the, the gap between investment and market adoption by connecting the digital to the physical world in terms of green mobility and basically creating uh, economic incentives and ecological impacts at the same time by the way we're designing the, the digital engagement. Thank you, Ray. It's absolutely clear that you are tackling very emerging issues, uh, especially referring to the space, uh, which uh, uh, becomes a huge uh, opportunity. So thank you. Thank you very much uh, for our pitch presenters. Uh, it was the uh, last pre presentation for this session. We uh, saw a lot of interesting uh, or quite interesting solutions, uh, several of them. So now I'm inviting jury to ask questions questions for uh, next uh, 10 minutes. Uh, we, uh, it is about 8 to 10 minutes uh, uh, about Q&A. And uh, please keep your questions brief and precise as much as possible in, in order to use remaining time in most constructive way and to get uh, accurate answers. 
So is anybody who wants to start with the question to our pictures? Uh, yes. Yes. I, I have a question for Suna because probably you didn't have the thank you very much for your presentation. Still I didn't really get what's the solution you're um, you're proposing. Uh, like just absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. And so essentially, we are creating um, uh, conversion services for existing existing fleets. And that's both for personal use as well as fleet companies. And we're doing that with some very innovative conversion technologies. Like I mentioned, we have three patents on the technology. Uh, and the way we're approaching the market space is we are basically issuing NFT IDs as passports into the space so that people can actually generate value and basically trade on their value in the Sooner network prior to and essentially signaling demand and de-risking for investors coming into that space in, in advance. So we're so the passport services actually create education and games and outreach all around the future of mobility and basically they get a wallet and a passport uh, that, that's a unique identifier for them in the, in the Sooner network. Maybe a follow-up question um, on, on the same project. Uh, just understand, so that have you, uh, have, have you uh, tested, um, uh, have you have already existing uh, functioning uh, pilots of, of your solution? Or is it yes. So, in where? So we have... Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so we have we have a, a conversion kit that that's that's proven in the marketplace, and we've also uh, been interacting with um, uh, the people who set up to and people in the European Commission who are set up to create new digital infrastructure. We've also talked to automobile manufacturers, uh, uh, Bosch in particular, uh, to be able to uh, use the, our package solution in their garages and. Uh, and 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 I think uh, more specifically, there's there's other relationships that are in formation. Uh, Carl is on the call, and I think Carl can possibly answer more specifics. Uh, but yes, we 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 have uh, we have proven uh, the technology, we have proven the solution, and we've uh, we've we've secured relationships with key players for both distribution and and development uh, around around these services. Thank you. Maybe some uh, question from uh, uh, others, members of the jury, for uh, other participants. Uh, I have I have three questions for, uh, to Jane. Uh, Jane, thank you for your to to all of us. Thank you for the presentation. Do you do you know the size of your market? It's it's one of of the questions. The other one is what methodology of of designing are you are you using for this, and how you are going to measure your impact. Sure. So the size of the market is about 25 billion. Uh, carbon black pigment is the most used pigment in the world, and we have created a product that can be a direct replacement in almost anywhere carbon black pigment is being used. Um, and we've proven that through multiple applications and testing with large customers and chemical companies. In terms of the impact, um, we do have a lot of research into that. So for example, on the petroleum carbon black side, for every kilo of pigment produced, 2.38 kilos of CO2 is generated in return. So, you know, more than twice the amount of CO2 is made per kilo of pigment. And for us, um, because our manufacturing process is closed loop, we have negligible or almost immeasurable amounts of CO2 released. So we, you know, we have the potential to save millions of tons of CO2 from entering the atmosphere. And then we also really consider health in our impact. So again, a really big problem with carbon black, petroleum carbon black are the PAHs, known carcinogens, and they're getting more and more regulated, particularly in Europe and um, you know that's it's awful. Like, nobody should be touching it's, that. It's a bit. It's a bit to be business, no. Yes, it is. 
and and there is someone who is already doing this there's we have some competitors we have competitors um but our product is higher performing than our competitors and it's less expensive we're cost competitive to the petroleum option thank you very much i love You're your welcome. project thank you thank you some another question Yes, please. I have uh, one question for Jane and uh, the other one for Andrew. So thank you very much, Jane. I really like your, your project because it's uh, okay. it can have an impact both on health and uh, on the environment. And I was wondering which are the entry barriers and if you have a intellectual IP on uh, on what you you make. Yes, we do. So we have a pending patent for the IP. And our entry buyers are mostly in textiles, the apparel and home textile industry. I have about 20 years experience in that industry, so it was a low-hanging fruit for us. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. And another one, for another question for Andrew. Um, so Andrew, uh, you are based in Costa Rica, right? Yeah, we are based in Costa Rica and part in Mexico also. Okay, and which are the main uh, challenges to in, uh, in, to grow fungi there with the climate? Because uh, most of, most of the time, uh, when you need to grow fungi, you need to have a quite cool uh, and uh, moist uh, climate. So, where where do you where do you make it in uh, in dedicated plants, uh, in warehouses, uh, in caves? Uh, where does it take place? Yeah, uh, well, we just started the production uh, and we have well, built the company in just one year. And right now we are producing with uh, the partnership with two, la two laboratories, one in the middle of Costa Rica in San Jose and the other one is in the coastline, basically in, uh, well, in the coast of Costa Rica, right? So we have managed to have our production in, all, in those two places. And right now we're investing in the production and uh, laboratory equipment and the final production facilities are going to be in the coastline, right? So we're producing right now in this area. And well, as I already mentioned to you, the, the team is based uh, here in the, in the middle of Costa Rica and the coastline. And also we have two members in Mexico. Um, we are exploring the possibility to scale and to get into the Mexican market. But it's going to, to to need the investment and also the time to get it done. Um, but yeah, basically in the coastline and also the weather is uh, well. We choose the location based on the weather, right? Okay, thank you. Thank Hi, you it's Nicolas, Nicolas speaking. Maybe one last question for Andrew. Um, yes. Andrew, I believe there are other companies that are you know trying to convert you know bio residues into uh, you know. Uh, plastic or, 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 or um, what's really your difference in your company? What, what, what's your key advantage versus your competitors? Yeah, uh, basically what we have been doing is to get a formulation right from different kind of uh, organic waste, right? Uh, the differentiation is basically that, well, I'm, I'm going to, to, to give you an example. There is a, this is the big company, which is uh, Microworks and also Equative Design, who are working with uh, waste, but they are not using the kind of waste that we are using, right? Here in Costa Rica, we have a lot of pineapple and also, um, well, pineapple and other kind of organic waste. So the formulation that we've got is the main differentiation, but also that we are uh, aiming and we're targeting a new market. These companies are not targeting the agricultural market. Um, basically, they are focusing the technology and the use of the uh, biopolymers in other industries, right? So that's why we are have choose the agricultural market and the differentiation is based on that. And well, that, is, that applies for both products, which is the biofilm and also for the most run based uh, materials, since we have two different materials. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for very active participation, uh, questions and answers. Uh, and uh, with this answer from Andrew, we will end this session. Uh, at the end of the session, some practical information. I will. Uh, uh, I invite you to join a networking in the virtual room. You have a link. Uh, if you have any technical difficulties to join the, the room, please uh, address our technical support. And uh, for the last reminder for all to vote for favorite solution.
uh, by voting you will support uh, to to pronounce uh, the winner of uh, pitch sessions uh, which is going to be pronounced on sunday so um, again thank you for a uh, very uh, uh, interesting and uh, um, how to say, uh, inspiring, uh, uh, innovative solution presented uh, and uh, have a nice day and enjoy in the following events of the change now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey everyone, you have the link to the networking tables. Okay. Hi everyone. You have the link.